Hi, I'm Danny, also known as GCSE Potential, and today we're going to be talking about how to get into LSE for economics. I'm really grateful to be joined by Thompson, who is a second year economics student at the LSE. I just want to quickly preface this video by saying there's a few videos online about how to get into LSE for economics, but a lot of them you need to avoid. And that's because I remember watching one of them which said, you should put in your personal statement, you want a corner office in Goldman Sachs. Please don't do that. I went to an open day and the LSE admissions tutor actually started joking about it. Don't do that. If that's the one thing you take away, don't do that. Um, but yeah, in this video, we're going to go through the entire application process. So GCSEs, A-levels, personal statement and Tamua. Um, so yeah, would you introduce yourself and we can get started. Hi, my name is Thompson. As Danny said, I'm a second year student doing economics at LSE. And uh, I can't guarantee my video will be better or worse than any other ones out there, but I'll be completely transparent about how my process went and give you any advice that I can from what I learned. But yeah, let's get started then with GCSEs chronologically. Um, so my questions are like, what GCSEs do you need for LSE economics? What GCSEs did you get? And which GCSEs are the most important for LSE economics? So I got 10 nines and a and a seven. I'd say the majority of people at LSE, you'll see a lot of people with all nines, but it ranges from like nines, eights and sevens, typically like A's and above essentially. In terms of like specific GCSEs to focus on, I wouldn't say it's as much the subjects, but rather just the grades, like just get the best grade you can. But if there was one that you'd focus on, I'd say GCC Maths because A-level Maths is very important and so doing well in GCC Maths is just that sort of continuation. Uh, if you were to focus on any, I'd say that one, but just get the best you can in all of them essentially. So yeah, moving on to A-levels then. So my questions are, which A-levels do you need for LSE Economics? Which A-levels do most people need? Uh, sorry, do most people take? Um, which A-level grades do you need? I think of the website, it was like A star A. So do you need to exceed that? What predicted grades should you be looking for? Are there any A-levels which are better than others? Kind of the spiel on A-levels. So I did A-levels in maths, further maths, economics, physics, and EPQ. Uh, the EPQ wasn't necessary at all. As I'll touch upon, doing four A-levels is important. I'd say maths, further maths, econ, and then one other subject is recommended. But the EPQ was more because my school just had a weird system where they were like, oh, other maths doesn't count as a subject, so do another. Fine, anyway. I mean, he did the exact same subjects, but history instead. So the A-levels that you need, I'd say the only one that they actually require on the website is maths, and they require an A-star in that. But... That's like the sort of um, the entry, but to actually be competitive, uh, be a competitive candidate, you would need maths and further maths minimum. I'd say further maths is probably the most crucial subject to get into LSE for economics because the course is just very quantitative and every, almost every candidate who is, has a good show of applying and you'll be competing with would most likely have further maths and have an A or A star predicted in that. Then I'd say, so if I were to tier them, I'd say maths and further maths at the very top. Uh, doing economics at A level, although not a necessary thing, it helps you a lot in the course. It can help you with writing your personal statement. By no means is it needed. A lot of the stuff that I do in my course, A level economics doesn't actually help that much. It just gives me like a basic understanding, which you can learn anyway without doing economics. Then I'd say try and do uh, this one's up to you in the sense that I definitely say do a fourth subject but it's like on the LSE website they've specifically said they if you do maths further maths and then economics they would like for you to do another subject because essentially if you're doing maths further maths and econ you're just doing two subjects but you can still get in with just those three like that's not necessarily an issue but they the uni just says oh they prefer if you did a fourth and so I'd say either pick something that's essay based that links to econ like history or politics or what I would recommend is something quantitative, like a STEM subject, like sciences. So engineering you could do, but I'd recommend physics. That's the one I did. But you could also do biology and chemistry if you feel like it. But physics, I feel like the most, makes the most sense in terms of there's the most sort of um, comparisons that you can make and like uh, transferable skills. And so grades wise, they require A star AA, but I would recommend, again, get the best you can because um, you will be competing with people who have all A stars predicted or have achieved all A stars. And so you want to be as competitive as you can. And so you should be aiming for like the best grade you can possibly get to be as competitive as you can be. Perfect. Thank you very much. So yeah, A-levels matter quite a lot. Further maths is the big one. So with LSE, unlike Oxbridge, they don't have any interviews. So instead they have an admissions test and a personal statement. And this is really where you differentiate yourself. Because to be completely honest, the majority of people applying to LSE, especially for economics, which is their best course, their flagship course, will have pretty much straight A stars, pretty much straight nines, give or take, like a bit of movement there. So what really differentiates you is your personal statement, which is really important, and so is Tamura. I personally think that personal statement is most important for LSE. Like, they're the university which cares most about the personal statement pretty much in the world. Um, Tamura also matters quite a bit, but it's more of like, a, if you get this score, then it's kind of like a cutoff. I don't think really big scores help you. But we can start to talk about that now. Um, so I guess with the personal statement, there's quite a lot to say with the personal statement. Um, so what makes a good personal statement for LSE? What sort of stuff should you be doing? What structure would you take? So introduction, paragraphs, conclusion, 
what are the hallmarks of good personal statement? What is LSE looking for? And maybe towards the end, we can put yours up on screen maybe. Um, how does that sound? So in terms of making a good personal statement, I think there's a the range of factors that come into it. One thing that the UK does uniquely for like universities here, and especially for top universities to have a good shot, is they're very academic focused. So it's more on not, oh, did you do DOV, which is the typical example everyone uses. But um, it's about your interest in the subject and how you've explored that interest. And so... Uh, again, with the economics, it's the exact same in terms of like, are you interested in economics, first of all? Then second, how have you sh demonstrated that interest? And so, and again, A-level economics is not enough. You need to show how have you gone beyond that? Because a, like a lot of people do A-level economics, like you're not different. But how have you used that to then expand? So let's say in A-level economics, you learn about something that interested you, like uh, let's say monetary policy. And so then you start reading into monetary economics uh, to explore more. You read a book on it and then you watch a lecture and you talk about what you learned, what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. That's how you would use A-level economics to build on and show your interest in the subject. Uh, super curriculars are extremely important. It should make up the bulk of your personal statement. I'd still recommend including a bit about yourself and like other stuff you do, like extracurriculars. I'd say that shouldn't take up the most part and you should still try and link it to econ in some way if you can. Yes, yeah, so I think 99% academic, 1% extracurriculars is what I went for. I did one sentence about um, extracurriculars. And ideally, your extracurricular should be like linked to academia, if, some, yeah. if possible. Like debating is a good one because you can always link that. What did you talk about for your extracurricular? That's one thing where I would uh, sort of caveat, but no one says like I wouldn't say go typical like strictly for 99.1, but it's in a sense like a how impressive are your extracurriculars? Because if they're really impressive, you should still mention them because it's like a um, it's obviously it'll have an impact. But it just depends on like what level. Like if it's like you're talking about you did uh, sports at like a regional level, then it won't have a massive impact. But if you did sports at, like a national or international level, I'd still mention that because that still shows like a level of competitiveness that not many candidates can match. Actually applying economics to real life, I think that's one of the best ways that you can use your super curriculars. I focused on inequality economics, uh, development economics, environmental economics, and then I did do some on behavioral economics. That's what I did my EPQ on but I didn't actually talk about them in my personal statement. Basically, your personal statement should be focusing on the types of, the sections of economics that you're interested in. And so those are the three that I focused on. I had a paragraph for each, and I talked about books I read, I talked about lectures I watched, courses I did, and if applicable, extracurriculars I did that could apply to it. All right, cool. So in terms of the structure for your personal statement, to begin with, with your introduction for your personal statement, what should it kind of consist of? Uh, I'd say make it a uh, short, snappy, and like sort of hooks them in, but also more of like a, it ties in with the themes that you're going to cover in your personal statement. So like, I can't exactly remember, but I think it was to do with how, um, how economics is linked with all types of, um, all fields of study, all fields of academia. Like I mentioned, you have uh, psychology, ecology, uh, politics, like it covers everything. I was basically talking about how economics links with everything and then I mentioned um, environmental inequality and development, which was the themes that I was going to cover in my personal statement. And then I just went straight into it by saying, oh, uh, I read this book, watched this lecture, X interested me in this section of economics and this is how I developed that further. And then I'd link it through. So for example, I'd say, oh, uh, became interested in inequality economics by watching this video. And then I read this book. And this book led me to enter this essay competition. And then in the essay competition, I learned this, this, and this. I agreed to this, disagreed with this. And then I watched this lecture to learn more about this specific thing that I agreed or disagreed with. You need to show that breadth. And then you also need to go into depth. So those are the two important things. You need to have both uh, to have a good paragraph or a good personal statement as a whole. You need to go wide and deep. And so the depth comes from have you actually like uh, evaluated and critically thought about the concepts that you're learning about? And then what is your opinion? Because that's really important, right? Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? And then if you disagree, what do you think is correct? Or why do you think it's wrong? And so that's what you'll be doing at university. That's what you should be doing in your personal statement because your personal statement essentially, are you suited to study this subject at university? And so if you can demonstrate the skills that you need to study at university in your personal statement, you'll go very far. Talking about just do you agree or disagree? And if you agree, why? If you disagree, why? And try and find more evidence to support it. Sort of like an essay, essentially. But going a bit more in depth than you would at A level. Because again, that depth is really important in terms of like the content you'll be talking about, the concepts, the theories will be a lot more complex. And so you can't just say, like you can't use your typical like PEE of saying like, oh, I think this is wrong because, give your evidence and then explain. Like you need to have a bit more depth and like use more more sources and talk a bit more like the specifics of why you disagree and like to what extent you disagree. There's a lot you can cover, but essentially uh, to summarize what I've just been saying, 
if you want depth in your personal statement, it's about giving your opinion and backing that opinion up. Perfect. Thank you very much. So yeah, a lot of information there. So like, um, thank you for the conversation. I think the big things are like, um, no one cares that you've read a book. No one gives a shit. What they do care about is what you've done with reading that book. What you thought. Exactly. What you thought about it. So for example, let's say someone, The Deficit Myth, classic book. So that's talking about MMT and then you can give your opinion on it. So do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Why? And it's really good if you're able to develop that opinion. So you disagree with it because of this research report. However, this research report disagreed with that, etc. So really continuing that chain of thought. Um, I guess the last thing was a conclusion. Um, introduction, I agree, should be really sure. What should your conclusion be like? Um, is this where you include extra kicklers or what? So I think your conclusion should be like a bit of like a, uh, you can pack stuff into it. So there you include some extra extracurriculars if you have some notable ones that you'd want to mention. But then you can also, I think, again, it's a point where the most important thing of the conclusion should do is tie all your points together. Perfect. Thank you very much. And yeah, once again, personal statement matters so much. So really, really do take this into account. So let's keep going now. And finally, we can talk about the Tamur. So Thompson did not suit the Tamur because the Tamur was not applicable at that time. He sat the TSA. So different exam. But yeah, so I had to sit the Tamur. I sat the Tamur. The Tamur is graded on one to nine. It's a maths exam. Paper one is pure maths. Paper two is maths and logic. In terms of a cutoff, you should basically, there's two different scales because they switched the scale in the most recent year. It's a one to nine scale still, but they kind of like shifted it a bit. So a good score in like this year's terms would be a 5.0 out of nine. Um, that's like a decent score. If you get that score, you've got a good shot. I've heard people getting in with a lower score, people getting with higher scores. A lot of it is context. So for example, if you're an international student, you should do better. If you come from state school, you don't need to do as well. Um, there's a lot of different factors which they include, um, like a postcode, etc. So I got the 5.4 in my Tamura. Um, I think I could have done better. I'm still happy with the score, to be fair. 5.4, which is like in the old scale, like a 6.7. Uh, so decent score, could have done better. In terms of my advice for preparing, there's a lot of stuff to say. Um, it's a maths exam, so that's essentially what you need to do. A lot of maths. Use Anki to make flashcards on anything you got wrong or any problem solving tips. But yeah, it's just a ton of maths. Use Tamura past papers, ECAA past papers, Anger past papers, MAT section one past papers, do UKMT questions. Those sorts of things are really good resources. Step foundation modules are really good. If you manage to do all of those, to be honest, I think you're pretty much guaranteed a 5.0 and plus. As long as you like really like learn from your mistakes. So after you've done a question, you really understand why you got it wrong. If you got it wrong, uh, make a flashcard in it, maybe have a document. Um, those are kind of the key things. R2 Drew to is really good YouTube videos. Um, do all the Tamil past papers, of course. Um, but that's mostly it. Just get a 5.0 and you'll be completely Completely fine. But even if you don't do as well, if you're from a state school, you should be okay. But yeah, your personal statement matters most more than anything. Like you can't do really well in the Tamu and get away with a shit personal statement. Everything needs to be good. It's LSE economics. Everything has to be good. Um, at this point in time, I have a Cambridge offer. I have an Imperial offer. I have two UCL offers, and I still have not heard back from LSE. Even though I think my personal statement was really good and my Tamu score was decent. So like, it's not a guarantee by any means. I might get the offer. I might not. Doesn't matter to me, obviously. I guess I'll update the description. Let them know. Um, but yeah, just goes to show like because it's so competitive. Even if you think you've done well in everything, there's still a chance that they could reject you just because it's so competitive. But um, yeah, I think that's it for most of the video. I guess the final thing I wanted to touch on with Thompson is like, you've been here for two years now. So what's the LSE economics course actually like? I think a lot of people want to do it because they wanted to go into finance, but they don't really know what the course is like. So give us a little summary of what it's like at university. Uh, I'd say my first point, and it's the, I think this is the very key point for people who want to do economics at university because they did A-level economics. It is not like A-level economics at all. Like it's like a, it is extremely rigorous in terms of like the maths you involve. Um, and there are still those concepts that you covered in A-level economics, but it's a lot less of like, a, I don't think a, the A-level preps you for the course in like, at all. Like, it, it, it doesn't help you. If you're doing a BA or a joint honours, then it will be more like A-level economics. But if you're doing a BSc in economics, just expect a lot of maths. Like, uh, in my first year, there was still a lot of, um, there was still a lot of concepts that like I found very interesting, uh, but it was just the maths behind them. So like, uh, even for example, in my microeconomics module last year, we looked at supply and demand curves, but we looked at the maths behind them. And so I think that's the key distinction. Like you will cover a lot of the concepts that you learn in um, A-level, but you'll re-explore them from a mathematical perspective or just from a new perspective because you'll find out that what you learn is wrong. But on the finance side of it, like uh, LSE is obviously a very uh, finance oriented university. Uh, you can't go get away with first year without hearing about spring weeks multiple times. Um, I am also not innocent of that. I, I <laughs> Again, it's not required to be interested in finance to go to LSE, although it has a reputation. And if you do want to do finance, there's so many opportunities that come from going here. You don't have to want to do finance to go to LSE. LSE by itself is still a really good academic institution. And I think also one thing I recommend is if you want to do finance, do finance as a degree. Like if that's your only aim for going to LSE is to do finance, then don't do economics because you have to actually be interested in the subject to do economics because some of the stuff that comes along with it like it will get difficult but if you enjoy the subject then it's not going to be as difficult to you because you'll actually be enjoying what you're learning you still get the same outcomes very similar outcomes in terms of like uh, finance wise and applications 
and you'll be doing a course that's actually you're better suited to. Well, thank you very much. There was a lot of information to cover here, but hopefully this has been done in an effective way. Hopefully you learned a lot. Um, if there's any links or anything we've discussed in this video, then they'll be linked in the description. Um, in particular, I have a personal statement guide, which might be useful. Um, I got an LSE offer last year when I applied, um, so it's kind of based off that and a lot of other stuff I learned. Um, so that's all in the description. Um, hopefully this has been useful. LSE economics is very, very difficult to get into, but hopefully this video has given you some useful insight, reusable and useful quite a little. Um, thank you very much, Thompson, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully we'll see him on the channel again, something to do with finance. He's a very, very well-known finance striker. Um, so thank you very much. Best of luck with your applications and um, hopefully see you at the LSC soon. Thank you, everyone. And also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My replies may be slow, but I'm always happy to help. Uh, just don't, like, uh, don't, uh, I was don't gonna... don't ask Googleable questions, basically. Yeah, Make yeah, his yeah. life easy. Um, and yeah, I'll put his LinkedIn in the description. Um, connect with him on LinkedIn. Right now, Melvin Striker. But yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.